Okay, open graph apps. What are the two okay. things companies should do? What are the two things companies should not do? I'll start with a should not do. Okay. They should not come to open graph applications thinking about them as campaign-based applications. Okay. Meaning that, you know, typically with a campaign-based application, you're gonna build something, you're gonna launch your campaign, and then you're gonna walk away from it. Right. With open graph applications, what you're doing is you're asking users for permission basically to authorize that application. In essence, you're sort of aggregating users mm. who are authed into your application. In right. some ways, it's similar to aggregating the, the users who have liked your page, right. which gives you the right to publish to them. Yep. This is giving um, your brand permission to basically add their personal information into your application experience to yes. make that experience better. Right, to so, begin a trusted relationship with these people. Exactly. Yep. If you think about getting people to go cross that uh, bridge with you, there's a value exchange and you're not going to get everybody to cross with you. So what you want to do is you want to build an application, iterate on that application over time, make it better and better, and that's going to allow you to aggregate people in the application over time. Mm. So if you think about the ad meter campaign that we just did yeah. with Facebook and USA Today, yeah. next year when they, they're going to build basically if they build on top of their existing application, they'll yep. already have a, a giant base of users who are opt-in to build off of. Yes. They won't have to start over. So that's why shifting the, the mind frame yep. from campaign-based to evergreen experience yeah. is, is really important when you're leveraging the open graph. I'll give you uh, a do. Okay. So one of the things you do want to do that sort of goes hand in hand with that is that you want to create an experience that has both an opt-in experience, mm -hmm. right? I've given you permission. Yep. And a un-opt-in presentation. Right, like, I'm not ready to give you permissions yet, but I still want to be able to have this experience. You yeah. should never gate users out of the experience just because they won't give you permissions. Yep. So, um, you you will, if you create two parallel experiences, basically, and you do a good job, you'll have an opportunity later to ask for that permission again. You can see, hey, you've yeah. been hanging around here, you've been engaging with this application, are you ready to give us permission yet? Yeah. Because now, like, we can give you all this extra stuff. How about taking taking a chance with See, us? See, that's that's so smart because I'm a holdout. I have not allowed any permissions across the open graph sharing yet. But I want to see what the experience is like. I want to communicate yeah. with the brands. Another don't. Another don't could be so I think a lot of these are gonna focus around the sort of what I call the permissions dance, which is and it's it's an important dance to learn to get get good at because um, it's a critical piece of open graph applications. Mm -hmm. So um, one don't is to basically pop the question right out of the gate that I want your off, right? So what you need to do is you need, and I'll give you the do, which is the corollary of this, sure. which is you want to show users the value exchange that they're going to get in yep. advance. So um, in the case of USA Today, for example, that might mean literally show me um, a little bit of the experience of what I'm going to see once I opt in. Maybe you can make that a transparent, grayed out kind of thing, yeah. saying, hey, this is here's here's what you're going to see, and we're going to show you your friends, and we're going to show you the special leaderboard right. of your friends that we can give you uh, no, now that we have these permissions. So don't pop it up front. Build some value first. Make sure that you walk them up to the off in, in a nice way, yeah. show them the value. When they get through, thank them for going through and continue delivering value. Yeah. I think that if they say no, one of the things to, uh, that you can consider is there's sort of two ways to, to think about asking for permissions. There's the sort of persist, what I call the persistent ask, yep. which is that I'm gonna have this, this ask basically that sits on the side of the page. It's always gonna be there. Yep. You can opt in at any time. If you're, I actually am more of a fan of um, the intermittent ask, which is basically, you've had some experience, you chose not to opt in, I'm gonna take that away for a little while. And I'm gonna let you engage with my application, and then I'm gonna pop it back up at a time that feels appropriate. Did you know, if you authorize, I could do X, Y, and Z for you right now? Yeah, yeah. So create a sense of urgency by taking it away and giving yep. it back. And keep it fresh and keep it um, keep it value-based. Yeah. yeah. Roland, totally. thank you so much. Very cool. practical, very candid. Glad to be here.